your thanks, we give a praise. We adore you for your faithfulness, your love and kindness, your tender mercies. Can we lift our voice and just exalt his holy name? He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. We bless your name, we bless your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised and adored? And so we lift up holy hands in one accord. Oh, singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Shout out. Can we listen to and sing it with that? Blessed be the name of the Lord. He deserves the worship. Him alone is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up.
your name there is no one like you in all the earth there is no one to be compared with you receive all the glory receive all the worship we adore you we reference your name for you are the Lord most high you are the mighty God you are the excellency of Jacob let your name be magnified. Let your name be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for today, a day you have made. Lord, we pray that as we have gathered in your name, that your glory will overshadow us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of the days, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
and on behalf of our Archdeacon and our vicar, the Venerable John Aboro, we welcome you to today's midday prayer. And we pray that the Lord Almighty shall open your book of remembrance in the name of Jesus. You shall be remembered for good in the mighty name of Jesus. Please sit back. Today we are going to uh, have the second part of the last the last time uh, the, the theme of the last ministration we had. The theme is minding your conversation part two. Minding your conversation part two. And our text is taken from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. The Bible says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Praise the living God. Last time we discussed, that is yesterday, we we are able to understand that God is interested in our conversations. And also we we are focusing uh, the aspect of conversation to faith, our reaction to what God has said our application of what God has spoken to us into our reality. And we discover that God is not pleased when we don't speak faith. God is not pleased when we don't believe his word. And we're encouraged to speak faith and believe the word of God wholeheartedly. And for you to know that God is much interested in what we discuss. Uh, hence, the word of God is telling us today again about minding our conversation. And today we are looking at the aspect of corrupt conversations. Corrupt conversations. According to the scripture, it says, let no corrupt Communication proceed out of your mouth. So, corrupt communication is immoral communication or indecent discussions or vulgar talks. These are corrupt communications. You know, almost all the content of our discussions or communication these days are becoming unholy. Even the emoji that we send across, the meme that we send across, if you look at them, some of them are immoral memes, corrupt communication. So, you may say that it does not matter. That it is part, it is part of life. Don't take it too serious. You are always taking life too serious. This is just play. But we let's also look at what the... Scripture said again in chapter 5 of Ephesians from verse 3. He said, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving things, giving of things. So we can see that it matters. God was so emphatic in the scripture about what we discuss, what we converse, what we talk with people. Call it your friend, your colleague, your associate. You are you, anyone. What are the content 
of your discussions? What do you discuss with your opposite sex? What are the content of your chats? What, which line of thoughts are you discussing? God is interested, just like he did to the two men on their way to Amos. The Bible said that Jesus Christ drew near the same way. He is also in our conversations. Even though he is disappointed, he might be disappointed by the content. But don't think that he is not away. He is away. Praise the Lord. The scripture is very clear that God does not support corrupt conversations. And if you have found yourself in such conversations, I pray that today God shall deliver you from unholy conversations in the mighty name of Jesus. Why should we mind our conversations, you may ask? Mind your conversation. Why should I mind my conversation? Let's look at that scripture again. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. He said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of a divine. So why, why we should be mindful of our conversation is that conversations should edify. Conversations should do what? Should edify. Any conversation that does not edify is not worth having. So whatsoever that does not edify is not necessary. And when we talk about edification, it talks about building up, encouraging, building up. So when we have godly conversation, we build ourselves up. We strengthen each other. We strengthen ourselves and encourage each other unto holiness. But when we indulge ourselves in corrupt communication, we render ourselves useless. That's how uselessness starts. It starts with conversations. Useless talks, and you, we become un, unhelpful. We become obscured. And it ends up putting us in a dark corner of life. You see your life getting dark as day goes by. I pray that God will deliver us from corrupt conversation and help us to edify ourselves through holy conversations in the mighty name of Jesus. Then the second, uh, the second point on why we should mind our conversation is also found in verse 29. And I, I tempt it, corrupt communication makes us to be ministers of evil instead of minister of grace. Corrupt communication makes us to be ministers of evil instead of ministers of grace. So, you are a minister of what you discuss. You are a minister of communication. Whichever communication you are engaging yourself, whether it is corrupt communication, you become a minister of unrighteousness. If it is a holy communication, you become a minister of grace. Look at it in verse 29. He said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the, a, to the use of a divine, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. So, when you, what you say is a ministration. Every word you are speaking, you are ministering. So either you are ministering grace, which is from God, or you are ministering or righteousness, or you are ministering evil. So the discussion we find ourselves in is the office we are operating in. It makes us a minister of that communication. Praise the Lord. So you may not be party to uh, you, you, you may not know that you are planting things in the life of people when you are 
saying the things that are inappropriate. You know, most times you discover that the young people that you think that they are innocent, our little ones that are looking innocent, the, you know, the elderly people around them that are corrupt, they tend to transfer that corruption to them through having evil discussions. There are a lot of communication that is going around. And I pray that God will keep our children from every evil communication in the name of Jesus. And I pray that we shall not be party to those or with those that are pushing people away from God. Because when you are not ministering grace, you are ministering evil. And as you are ministering things that does not edify, you are pushing people away from God. And they would ah, see this brother, if this person that is this, uh, that goes to church, that attend this church, attend this fellowship, every time on the group chat, on the uh, status, he has this and that. If he can say this, that, is, that means church is a scam. So, when you, you are not ministering grace, you are bringing reproach to the name of God. Most of our status, WhatsApp status, even Facebook post, you post Jesus is great. The next post is corrupt ministration. And people don't even care about, they, they, I don't, they don't even, are not even sensitive, they don't feel anything wrong with such. You, you, you make them post on status or, or, or normal posts on social media. The first one is talking about God. The other one is talking about indecency, advertising indecency, corrupt discussions, corrupt mean, and all this and that. So you are making yourself a minister of the devil. And may God deliver us from such ministrations in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, why we, the third reason why we should mind our conversation is found in verse 30. So I termed it that we should mind our uh, conversation so that we don't grieve the Holy Spirit. We should, we need to mind our conversation so that we don't grieve the Holy Spirit. So, in that uh, chapter, th uh, verse 30, it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. You know, you, that's a follow-up to 29, when he was talking about corrupt communication proceeding out of our mouths. That means if we continue having every time corrupt discussion, mixing, you know, not, you are not here, you are not there, you, the Holy Spirit is not impressed. And you will end up, you are grieving him and you will end up chasing him out of your life. I pray that you will not chase Holy Spirit out of your life in the name of Jesus. So, the, the one thing we also need to know is that when, when, you, when you are involved or engage yourself in corrupt communication, the flesh is excited. But the Holy Spirit is grieved. And the Bible made us know that uh, the, the, the flesh wants something that is against the spirit. The same way the spirit wants something, what the spirit wants is against what the flesh wants. So they are in enmity with each other. That means if I grieve the Holy Spirit through my communication, I am exciting my flesh through that corrupt communication. But as a child of God, I should be very careful that I don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So, we have to look inward. What are the kind of communication we have at our place of work with our colleagues during your break period? What are the contents, you know, where you sit with your fellow boys or fellow girls? What are the content of your discussions? God is likewise interested in that. Let it be filled with edification. Your WhatsApp platform, it is not for anyhow talk. 
you are get together wherever, whatsoever the discussion might be. The discussion with your opposite sex, let it be unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the counsel of the Lord in Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Let's look at the counsel of God concerning that. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. The Bible says, okay, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. 4, verse 6. It says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. So, God is encouraging us and telling us that our speeches, our communications, our conversations should be always, not sometimes, always with grace and seasoned with salt. And when we look at the salt, why, why, why is God talking about salt and communication? What is the relationship between salt and communication? Salt preserves. Salt also uh, gives taste. So it means that our communication can preserve life. And our communication should also be tasteful. Don't be making tasteless communications. Don't engage yourself in tasteless discussions. Any discussion that does not edify God, it is tasteless. Don't involve yourselves in, in jokes that does not edify the spirit. These are tasteless things. He said, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. So that means there sh- our, our conversation should be spicy enough that it carries the, 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 the presence of God, it, it, that it, it comes with the word that can preserve. That when someone that is demoralized hears your word, he is encouraged. When someone that is tempted he has your discussion. He is encouraged or she is encouraged. That's what he means by seizing with salt. That means if someone on the path of destruction hears your voice or engage with you with, in a discussion, that through your discussion, that person is preserved. That person is saved because you, your discussion is unto edification. Praise the Lord. That another aspect of the salt, tastefulness. That means if someone is tired or depressed of the world and was feeling bad about everything, that when he hears your discussion, when you engage with him or with her, that the person is revived. A new hope is ignited in him or her. It's the person begins to see the tasty part of life, the, the, the joy of God in life. Instead of losing hope, instead of being depressed, because of your conversation, because of your communication, the soul is revived. I pray that we shall be the agent that God will use to preserve souls and to revive hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you, receive grace to start engaging in communications that is seasoned with salt in Jesus' name. Receive grace to start engaging in communications that is seasoned with with salt in the mighty name of Jesus. Stand up, let's begin to pray. Let's begin to repent from our corrupt communication. You know yourself. I know myself. Begin to talk to God in repentance. Anywhere you have been a purveyor of corrupt communication, you are a minister of corrupt communications. You are always pushing the narrative of corruption into your space for everyone to see in your discussions. Begin to ask God for mercy. Ask him, Father, today I am 
repenting. Your word have made me to know that I am going the wrong path. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit any longer. Help me, Lord, that I will walk in the path of righteousness. That my word will no longer be filled with corruptions. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Let's open James chapter 1 verse 26. James chapter 1 verse 26. The Bible says, If any man among you may, uh, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridle let not his tongue, but deceived his own heart. This man's religion is vain. Praise the Lord. As we are going to ask God for the grace to break through our tongue. He said that no matter how serious you are in the things of God, no matter what you say or when you, are, when, when you gave your life to Christ, that if you cannot break through your tongue, that your religion is in vain. Say this prayer, Father, I receive grace to pray through my tongue in Jesus' name. Make it a prayer. Father, I receive grace to pray through my, song, my tongue in Jesus' name. May I not love, may, may I not love things that you, you don't love. May I not say things that does not edify. Father, Lord, I pray that I may not live, I will not live in hypocrisy. Help me to pray through my tongue. That my tongue will not speak things that does not edify. That my tongues will not speak things that destroy my soul. That my tongues will not destroy my life journey. That my tongue will not pursue the Holy Spirit for my, my, my life. Make it a prayer. Ask God, Father, bridle my tongue. That I will not speak what my flesh wants me to speak. Help me not to speak what my flesh want me to speak. But Lord, that I shall speak what shall please the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. The Bible says, Then said I, Woe, to, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. So, this man, man of God, is a man of God, uh, Prophet Isaiah. Until his eyes were open, he did not know that he was guilty of unclean lips. And to his own surprise as well, he discovered that he is among the people with unclean lips. So he has, he surrounded himself, he is in the midst of unclean company, unclean friends. Say so he's a man of unclean lips and he dwell in the midst of unclean people. I don't know the, in the midst of the kind, the kind of people you are in their midst. But this man was able to tell himself the truth that he is in, in, among, among unclean people. People with unclean lips. So we're going to make this prayer. Very important prayer. Say after me, Father, I receive the boldness and grace to change my discussion circles in the name of Jesus. Father, I receive the boldness and grace to change my discussion circles in the name of Jesus. Ask God, ask God for that grace and boldness that you are going to leave those, those people, those friends of unclean lips. It is a bold step that must be made. If you continue with them, 
you will continue having unclean lips. You have to detach yourself. Ask God, Father, from today, I receive the grace to detach myself from the circle of friends of unclean lips. In the name of Jesus, people that always bring gist that does not edify. In the name of Jesus, I am leaving any of my friend that brings my faith down with corrupt discussions. In the name of Jesus, today I am moving out of that circle. I refuse to live among those with unclean lips. In the name of Jesus, ancient of the days, I receive the grace to say no to unclean discussions. I receive the grace to say no to evil communications. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you have prayed it, the Lord shall grant you the enablement and the grace to do as you have prayed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6, 6 to 7. Isaiah chapter 6, 6 to 7. The Bible says, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my, thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thine sin purged. Say, Father, touch my lips. Touch my lips, purge it of every dirtiness. Touch my lips, purge it of every dirtiness. As I, Isaiah experienced, so shall I experience. Lord, purge my lips of every dirtiness in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch my mouth, touch my lips, that every iniquity that is planted in my lips, that makes me that whenever I open my mouth, it is unto iniquity I'm discussing. Father, cleanse and purge them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33. We are going to use that to pray for our children. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33. He said, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. First Corinthians 15 verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. I want us to Anyhow you are being led, begin to pray for your children. Let's begin to pray for our children. Pray that God shall deliver them from the spirit of corrupt communication. Pray, pray, pray. This has gone very deep that some are even inserted in their exercise book, in their pen, the design, the pencils. They, you know, all these sub, 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 two, sub two ways. So in their wallets, some in their clothing, they buy clothes. The sticker is filled with corrupt design, corrupt pictures. So cry to God, Father, we cover our children with your glory and we pray that you shall deliver them from corrupt communication as they are in their schools, as they go about their their, their Duties as they grow, Lord, we pray that they shall not be partakers in corrupt communications in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that as we send them to school, they will not turn to be a strange child to us. In the name of Jesus, they will not change to a strange personality to us. In the name of Jesus, Ancient of the days, we cry that our children were not going to lose them to the devil. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that our children shall be taught of the Lord and grace shall be their reward. Lord, thus we be their portion and we pray and declare over our children, they shall be taught of the Lord. They shall be taught of the Lord. They shall be taught of the Lord. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the church of God. Lord, we pray that you shall make us people of edification, that we edify ourselves in you, that our garden shall be unto edification. Our greetings shall be unto edification. We pray for the leadership of the church, our primate, our, our archbishop and our bishop, our vicar and archdeacon. Strengthen them, Lord, that they shall do your will, they shall serve your table. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the priests in this church and the diocese and beyond. They shall not fail you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for this nation, Nigeria. You shall remember Nigeria for good in the name of Jesus. Every negative news over this nation, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. Only good news is allowed in this nation. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want us to bring our personal supplications before God. Bring your personal supplications before him. Our God is able and he can do all things. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for all you have done in this hour, of, in this moment of prayer. And we pray that what you have spoken to us shall bear fruit in our lives and the fruit it bears shall abide in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover our hearts, our soul with the blood of Jesus. Everything that pertains to us with the blood of Jesus. We are blessed beyond measures. As we please you, you shall smile upon us, and your glory shall radiate upon each and every one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for joining us once again today. And we bless the name of our God. We also want to re, uh, remind us about our Bible study tomorrow. Our Bible study tomorrow, Friday by 6 p.m. Please endeavor to pass the information around. We are no longer meeting, uh, having it on, on Mondays. It's Friday. Please make our time to be part of it physically. And in case you are not going to make it physically, endeavor to join us online. And God will bless you. We're also going to have our midday prayer tomorrow by 12 noon. The Lord bless you as you participate and partake in these gatherings to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Let us say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.